This video covers crucial information about taxiway markings in major airports. Now on your screen to the left is a bird eye view satellite picture of Toronto Pearson Airport in Ontario, Canada. You can clearly see that there are five runways and several taxiways connecting them. To the left, sorry, to the right is the airport diagram or airport chart of Toronto Pearson Airport. And you can see even clearer that there are five runways and a bunch of taxiways. But however, this is not the focus of today's video as it's too broad. Let's zoom in. Let's look at the left corner of the airport, uh, as you can see to the right uh, in the airport diagram. You can see two taxiways, taxiway Delta 6, and I think the other one is taxiway Delta, connecting uh, runway 06 left and 06 right in Toronto Pearson Airport. Imagine that a busy airport like Toronto Pearson Airport, which has about five to six runways and a bunch of taxiways where there are uh, traffics coming in and out of the airport as well as moving around in the airport. And also imagine there are thousands of thousands of airports around the world that are quite similar in terms of the capacity of the traffic uh, like Toronto Pearson Airport. Making sure that the airport markings, including the runway markings, taxiway markings, even the signs that you see as a passenger in the terminal, those markings are within the same system is crucial because then pilots, passengers, air traffic controllers from all around the world will be able to recognize these markings without having to learn, for example, a new language. So the International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO, has an annex to regulate or airport and um, aircraft markings so that the markings can be understood globally. In this video, we're going to talk about specifically taxiway, mar taxiway markings in an airport. You can stay tuned for other videos talking about runway markings and terminal signs. They're all within the same system. So let's get started. And this picture, to the left, we have four crucial information about airport taxiways. The first one here saying a directional arrows point So this gives us a bit of a overview of uh, the taxiway markings, but let's take a close look at some really, really crucial, actually 10 crucial markings. First one is called taxiway center line. This is really to, easy to understand. At the bottom left of your, of your screen, taxiway center line is a single yellow line. It provides visual cue to help identify location of hold position so that the pilots know they have to taxi along this line. Taxiway center line are enhanced prior to a runway holding position marking by using dash lines on both sides of the center line. Next thing you see towards the left here, you see the center line right here. This is the center line we just talked about. And to the left and to the right marks number two, which is the taxiway edge. This defines edge of the usable and full strength taxiway. Remember that every each of the aircraft weighs about maybe light as a couple of tons, but um, heavy aircraft can weigh over 100 tons. So holding these aircraft 
requires a specific kind of material made taxiway so that when uh, the aircraft taxi on it, the surface is hard enough to support the weight. So that's why it's really crucial for the airport to mark the taxiway edge so that the pilot know they cannot or they should not taxi the aircraft out of the edge because any surface that's out of the edge area will not be able to um, be strong, sorry, be strong enough to support the aircraft weight. Or in some other circumstances, you will see uh, taxiway markings like this, where you have two uh, solid yellow lines marking the edge of the taxiway and yellow lines pointing outwards from the taxiway. This means the same thing, but it cautions the pilots that the outside of the taxiway, as we can see here, is quite wide, but the surface seems to be the same kind of surface in terms of color as the inside part, but the outside surface cannot support the weight of an aircraft. That's why they mark it this way, so that the pilots are extra clear about the surface supporting uh, of the taxiway. Now we see here is number three, locating right here, a single dash line, yellow dash line, indicating taxiway holding position. This denotes location on taxiway or apron where aircraft hold short of another taxiway. So you can see here is an intersection between two taxiways. So the single dash line tells the pilot they need to stop, hold short, and wait for other aircraft to pass. And also sometimes, it's not showing the picture here, but sometimes you might see uh, taxiway edges are not solid to yellow lines, but dashed to yellow lines. That defines the taxiway edge where the uh, aircraft can pass without uh, having to notice the ATC, but with uh, this solid two lines of taxiway edge, it marks really clearly that the pilots cannot cross these lines. Now let's move on to number five. It says non movement area and the movement area. So non movement area boundary means movement area under movement area is uh, the area in an airport that's under control of the airport tower control, which is essentially uh, the part, the runway part, and the taxiways that directly connects to the runways. However, there are also parts of the airport that's not under the control of the tower controllers. They're under the control of the ground controllers. These parts are called non-movement area. So passing through movement area and non-movement area you will see a taxiway sign that is one dash yellow line and one solid yellow line. The next one is called taxiway location. On your left, you can see D, letter D or delta in black background surrounded by yellow lines and the letter itself is in yellow color. This identifies taxiway on which the aircraft is located. So the sign is usually located along taxiway by itself as part of an array of taxiway direction signs or combined with a runway or taxiway hold sign, which is the case right here. So this sign right beside it saying Bravo to the left and to the right is a direction taxiway. This defines a designation or direction of intersecting taxiways. It is located either on the left or on the right side of the taxiway and prior to the intersection. 
and it, it's usually uh, with pointing arrows. So here we can clearly uh, see that the taxiway, the pilots are the pilots who see this sign should be on taxiway delta, and in front of them, which is this taxiway, should be Bra taxiway Bravo both to the left and to the right. Now, a taxiway can also intersect with a runway, for example, here where a taxiway intersects with the runway. You can see here at this sign to the left, letter A or alpha in the yellow box is exactly the same as we just talked about, the delta. It's, it is a taxiway location sign. But to the right, when you have something that's letter in white and the background is red, that is a mandatory hold position for taxiway and runway intersection. That tells the pilots that's an entrance to a runway from a taxiway. The pilots, no matter under what circumstances, whether being cleared by the ATC or not, must stop before they enter the runway. So in this sign, you can see that runway 19 left is to the left side and runway one right is to the right side. And another thing to point out is this line, which you can see here, it has five lines. Let's look at these five lines. The first line, the single dash line we just talked about is a taxiway holding line. And these four lines, the four, these four lines that's close to this runway, this line is called runway safety area or runway approach, approach area boundary. This identifies exit boundary for a runway or a runway approach. On a taxiway, it's also called holding position. This means an entrance to runway from a taxiway. So, you can see there's a solid side and a dashed side. The solid side always mean the side that the pilot is taxiing on, and the dash side points to the runway side. So, when the pilot taxi the aircraft and meets the two solid lines, they have to stop before they continue into the runway. If it's the pilots are taxiing out of the runway, they will meet the dash line first, then they do not have to stop. They can continue on the taxiway. Lastly, we're gonna look at something called mandatory holding position for ILS, stands for instrument landing system, critical area, obstacle free zone. The sign, the two signs, one sign is a red background and uh, white letters uh, saying ILLS, and the other is a taxiway marking, which is kind of a letter marking, two lines and with two lines between it. This tells the pilots that it is an entrance to area to be protected for an ILS signal or approach airspace. Under uh, extreme weather conditions or under low visibility conditions, an airport which has the capability of uh, holding ILS landings may choose to conduct ILS landing uh, procedures. Under these circumstances, if you want to know more about ILS landing, you can go, uh, you can watch another video talking about ILS landing. But uh, if you watch that video, you will know that there is something called glide slope that locates just right beside the runway that tells the pilots, uh, that gives off signals to the pilots uh, for the pilots to have a vertical reference of their position. However, if an aircraft that's taxiing and waiting in front of that glide slope instrument might intercept or might disturb the signal that the glide slope gives off, so, to prevent that from happening, an airport which has the capability of conducting ILS landing must have or must mark clearly on each taxiway 
that's pointing towards the ILS lending runways, a ILS critical area boundary. So the pilots know that under ILS lending system, they have to stop here, which is a little bit uh, further than the runway to prevent the aircraft getting too close to the glide slope instrument. So that is it about taxiway markings in an airport. Hope you will learn some markings that you didn't know before. Stay tuned for other videos talking about runway markings and terminal signs and enjoy your day.